Dave Moore, big number 83, a former fullback. Sophomore, 6'3", and two and a quarter from Landing, New Jersey. Dave Moore going down the going down the left side off the good play action from Alex Van Pelt. Van Pelt is very deceptive at quarterback. And then he found Moore wide open, and Moore ran for a couple of acres before he met Roberts. Richards, and Richards cutting back and hurtling inside the 15 to the 13 or perhaps the 12. Hey, Sean Williams, an outside linebacker, along with Darren Sellers, the strong safety, bring him down. Swerving, Kervin Richards. Kervin Richards, originally from Trinidad. Hey, what, though? He looks right at home on the football field. Has the speed to get outside. Good blocking up front. They take out the, the left tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Kervin Richards picks up eight. Second down and a couple, and they call Richards' number again. And right there is Elnardo Webster, the junior from Jersey City. Richard's father and a couple of brothers all played soccer growing up in Trinidad. And they asked Richards why he didn't play soccer, and Kervin said there's too much running involved. Well, the kind of yards he gains on the football field, there's plenty of running involved there also. yard situation in the first quarter very close both teams have had great success offensively in its 15 14 Rutgers as we're in the second period Richards inside bouncing off the people and he gets it to eight to the eight yard line and more importantly than that he picked up the first down here's Paul Hackett man with the headset on he is known as an offensive passing genius First and goal, ball in the eight. Inside give, 26 is Derek Lewis, and he'll get a few. Pete Kofitsis, the nose tackle, and Joe Savoy, a defensive tackle, bring him down. There's Kofitsis, 74. He was heavily recruited. There's Lewis, another one of those freshmen playing. He's a redshirt freshman for his 89 numbers. I'll tell you, American football comes to Dublin. So does the wave, Drew. I guess they've been watching on television. American football, the NFL, is featured quite a bit on the weekends in Ireland. So they're familiar with the sport. Second and goal, ball from the four. Sykes in motion. Van Pelt wants to put it up. End zone shot, easy. Touchdown. Ronald Redman, a sophomore, gets it across, but hold everything. There's a flag down about the eight-yard line. And it'll be a procedure penalty against Pittsburgh, so that'll nullify the touchdown to Redman. Redmond wide open out of the backfield that time off the good play fake by Alex Van Pelt. Illegal formation, offense, six men in the line of scrimmage, five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Well, that's a no-no. You have to have seven on the line of scrimmage, and Mike Godfrey wants a clarification. That or he's getting after one of his players. He'll go from multiple formations sometimes they confuse even themselves i guess so they'll walk off five and it is second in goal for van pelt they go delay richards and he doesn't have a lot of room and he's going to lose a couple joe savoy was not fooled there's 78 senior from el raya ohio watch the penetration by savoy and by number 99 scott miller miller 
in the backfield. Spidell there, 63. Miller able to reach up, as did Savoy. And Pat Udovich, all in that Panther backfield. Big third down now for the Scarlet Knight defense. Coming up, double tight end formation. Adam Walker in the ball game, the lone back out of the ace formation. Van Pell under pressure down the middle, throwing and shy of the end zone. The reception was made by Lionel Sykes. And let's see if Mike Godfrey elects to go for it on fourth down or if he brings in the field goal unit. Rutgers was blitzing Darren Sellez from the right, but Van Pelt stands in there. And Sykes, who's really a load, at 250 pounds, gets down to the one-yard line. Here's a look from the end zone again. Van Pelt with the blitz on. And it's Vaughn McCoy making that big stop on Sykes. They're going fourth down. Richards to the outside. He'll get in. Just does get in before Pat Udovich gets over. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. And they go back on top. So Godfrey, the riverboat gambler on fourth and a couple, goes for it. And Kervin Richards makes him look like a genius. Another look. Sykes lines up in the backfield. They pitch it left to Kervin Richards. Avoids Blanton. Driven out by Udovich, but not before he gets across the plane of the end zone for the touchdown. There's Marshall Roberts, 22 there, but he just did get it across. And now Pittsburgh, with Van Pelt still in the ball game, will go for two, and now they'll talk about it. They burn a timeout. First one they've burned today. 7.45 to go in the half. Pittsburgh leading at 20 to 15. And their timeout sounds like a good idea. We'll step aside for a moment. The score is 2015 Pitt. There's people linguine with sauce. Of course, there's also lasagna with cheese. And what about turkey so tender? I surrender. But I gotta have a chicken enchilada with 37 Weight Watchers on trays. Choosing can be quite confusing. Pizza's a must on a regular crust or on French bread. Instead, spicy, creamy, chunky, crispy, zesty, meaty, crunchy, saucy, beans for pride. I can't decide. I can't decide. Oh, what a delicious dilemma. Weight Watchers, this is living. The end. No one knows precisely when man discovered his sense of humor. But there are a few theories about where. Ireland, the ancient birthplace of good times. Call 1-800-SHAMROCK. Yo, Alf here. Apparently some chowderheads out there aren't taking care of this planet. They're messing up public lands. They're littering the beaches and vandalizing the parks. Look, folks, public lands are not like pizzas. You just can't pick up the phone and order more. So let's take care of our land. Let's save the planet. Call me and promise you'll help. I'll send you a bunch of neat stuff. It's my way of saying thanks. It's an acknowledgement of your concern. It's a bribe. Pitt leads at 20 to 15. They just scored a touchdown on fourth and goal. Kervin Richards went two yards to score. Now they will go for two. Van Pelt sends two receivers to the top. He goes out of the eye. Richards the tailback. The up back is Derek Lewis. He gives straight ahead. Richards walks in. And it's 22 to 15, and that makes a seven-point differential. If you're just joining us, Pittsburgh broke on top in this ballgame, 7-0, went up 14-3. And then Rutgers came back, Scott Ernie threw a touchdown pass to Randy Jackson. And then Jimmy Can ran one over from about three yards away. And Rutgers went up 15-14. And now Pitt comes back with another touchdown. Two-yard run by Kervin Richards, and then a two-point conversion by Richards. And it's 22 to 15 with 7.45 to go in the first half. Ireland, 
Well, we have plenty of college basketball on Prime Network all season long. Pac-10, Big 8, Metro, Southwestern Conference, the WAC, Mid-American, WCAC. Check your local listings. If you're a college hoop fan, you won't find more than right here on Prime Network. Well, Dick Anderson now seeing his team trailing by a touchdown with 7.45 to play here in the first half. He's shown some daring today, the onside kick. Back deep, Gary Melton. He's on the left of your screen. Now jogging back there is also Ron Allen. Allen returned two kicks for touchdowns last year. 91 against West Virginia, 94 against the University of Cincinnati. He can do it. And he'll have an opportunity here from the 14-yard line. Ron Allen, they're running a reverse. And with the football now is Randy Jackson. Jackson across midfield and he's still going and finally run out of bounds at about the 31 yard line of the Panthers. Van Horn had to run him out, the kicker. Roger, we talked about this being the game for Rutgers. This is their bowl game. A win today will put a 2-6-2 two, and two season behind them. They'll go out on a winning note. Here's how they set it up. Allen and then that left side, plenty of running room for Randy Jackson. Jackson wide open, a wall of Scarlet Knight blockers in front of him. Actually, the kicker, Van Horn, makes a nice play to jam things up, but not before they get into pit territory at the 31-yard line. Jackson, 55 yards on the reverse from Ron Allen. Ernie right back to work. Sprints out, throws to Melton, and Melton hammered right away. Robert Bradley not fooled. He closed in a hurry from his cornerback position. Another one of those guys who is a grad student, a fifth-year senior. Excellent student. Matter of fact, Bradley is the only married player on the Pittsburgh roster. Married wife Joy. They have two sons. That's right. And he's in grad school right now. Wants to be a minister. Smart player, and you rarely find him out of position in that Panther secondary. Two receivers to the near side, second down and nine, Cannon in motion. Come on, Keith! Now Henry Henderson wide open underneath, he'll have a first down inside the 20 before he's bounced out of bounds at the 19. Doug Hetzler, the free safety, knocked him out. Now with Crossman out of the ball game, Hetzler goes to free safety. Lewis Riddick, the free safety, will play strong safety for Pitt. And here we go, Ernie to Henderson, open in the flat. Good block by Guarantano, ties up Alonzo Hampton. Henry Henderson, who was inserted into the starting lineup to get loose and make things happen around that line of scrimmage, has certainly done that here in the first half. Ernie has done everything offensive coordinator Dick Curl could have asked so far. the zone. Now Ernie will take it himself to the 14-yard line. Lewis Riddick covered him up. Ernie's laughing a little bit. He's having a good time out there, Pat. That's right. Here's Scott Ernie now. Look at the coverage. Pitt getting out there. There's Riddick. And that's reason enough to drop to one knee and slide in safely. Yeah, Lewis Riddick is the prototypical free safety nowadays. He's playing strong right now. 6'3 and 220, 4'5 speed. Blitz coming. Ernie reads it, tucks it back inside, and we'll get to about the 12-yard line. He tried to run over Richard Allen, who's a defensive tackle and is 270. He won't win that very frequently. <laughs> now, there's a good look at Richard Allen from Scott Ernie's perspective. Richard Allen working on center, Jeff Erickson of Rutgers, just standing there waiting, playing discipline. Syracuse misses Ernie, but there's Allen right there waiting for the quarterback. His job to contain on that play, and he did it well. He's got some big guns on him, too. Richard Allen, sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. And now it's third down and three. They need the nine-yard line, and Scott Ernie 
sees about seven Panthers up front and burns a timeout. And we'll do the same. We'll step aside for a moment. 5-10 to go in the first half. 22-15, to 15, the Panthers leading the Scarlet Knights. No longer, you get a free trip across now. And the fans who have attended the ball game, the second annual Emerald Isle Classic, certainly appear to be enjoying themselves. Plenty of points. 22-15. Rutgers is two of three on third down so far today. They have a third and three right now. Nobody home in the backfield. Henderson goes in motion. They throw Henderson's way, and I don't know. I think he's short. Robert Bradley wrapped him up right about the 10-yard line. I don't believe he got the first down. He needed the nine-yard line. That time, Robert Bradley, part of the nickel package for Pittsburgh, staying right with Henry Henderson, as you say, wrapping him up and it will be fourth and one. And the Scarlet Knights are going to go for it with 440 left in this first half. Again, as you've pointed out many times today, they have nothing to lose. They are two, six, and two. So it's fourth down, a full yard to go. Man coverage, it appears. Ernie rolling out, now in trouble. Scrambling, coming back the other way towards the end zone. Picked off in the end zone by Bradley who has been all over the place on this particular drive. So Pittsburgh turns away Rutgers on fourth down. Robert Bradley gets his fourth pick of the year, and that leads the team. Well, one of the keys against the run-and-shoot offense line that Rutgers is running today is getting to the quarterback and putting pressure on him. That time they did. Ricardo McDonald, the sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey, forcing Ernie to stop, and Scott would have been wiser in that situation to just hang on to the ball or throw it out of bounds. He put it up, and Bradley makes the interception and stops the Rutgers drive. Van Pell looking deep, throwing to the outside, nearly broken up and then caught. Orlando Truitt brought it in over the head of Darren Sellers. Van Pelt, they fake the play action to Kervin Richard, rolls him out right. He had an option early. Instead, he goes over Sellers to Orlando Truitt, makes a nice catch over the shoulder and gets out to the 39-yard line. Left guard Chris Getz is jogging off the field. Dave Dixon, a sophomore, 6'4 and 260 from Linwood, New Jersey, comes in at a left guard for Pitt. Dave Moore in motion. They give to Swerve and Kervin and he'll drive ahead for a couple. Elnardo Webster defensively for the Scarlet Knights. You know, Richards is a lot more powerful than he appears to be. He's 5'10", but he weighs 195 pounds. That's right, he had the big day against Penn State, a team that normally does very well against the rush. Richards picking up 152 yards. Last season, he ran for 202 yards against Rutgers. So far today, he's got two touchdowns. Adam Walker checks in for Richards, second and seven. Once again, Moore in motion. Van Pelt dumps it, and it was deflected, and then Walker couldn't hang on. He ran a little circle pattern over the middle. Pete Kofitzis, the nose tackle, I believe, got a paw up and deflected the football. Yeah, Kofitzis, he's a sophomore. He's 6'4", 235. He's been coming on of late. He's in there because he is bigger and stronger, and yes, he does get a piece of the ball. Another look just from Van Pelt's perspective. They fake the handoff. Wants to go to... Sykes, keep a look at there, 74 Kofitzis, right of your screen, gets a piece of the ball. Third down and seven, Van Pelt to the outside, wide open is Henry Tootin to the 36-yard line of Rutgers in front of Marshall Roberts. He just simply went about 18 yards down the field and turned around to the outside, came back nicely to the football. Henry Tootin. Senior from Camden, New Jersey. There it is. They fake the, the freeze, the linebackers, and then there it is, Tootin. Wide open along that left side. Tootin, a six-foot receiver. 21-yard gain, and now with 2.57 to go, Pitt threatening to increase their lead by more than seven. Three tight ends in the ballgame right now. 
Toyota Richards out of the tight formation. He breaks the tackle and loses the football, and I believe Rut Rutgers was on it, and I think Pitt got it back. I think Chris Sestilli, the center, gets the football back. Rutgers oh boy. was right around the ball that time. Rutgers had two people, apparently, or it appears, about to fall on it, and they actually knocked it loose. Hand off to Richards. He cuts it to the left. There he is, picking his holes. He does so well. Turning the corner, and there's Udovich. Udovich just strips the ball loose. Now it's on the field. It's anybody's ball. Miller has a shot at it. So did Leonardo Webster, but Sestilli comes in. And the center from Fair Fairview Park, Ohio, makes the play for the Panthers. And we've got a player shaken up on the play. Across the way, I believe it is number 99 for Rutgers, Scott Miller. I think it is Miller. I think he might have been one of the uh, people who had an opportunity to fall on it. And for our Irish viewers and also our viewers down in Mexico watching on Televisa, it is not easy or as easy as it looks to fall on a football when it's on the ground. That spherical shape sometimes does not want to be picked up. And that was the case there. Well, Senior League Baseball comes your way. Prime Network showcases senior professional baseball. Former major leaguers are back on the field. Join us and see why it ain't over till it's over. Senior Baseball action exclusively on Prime Network. And as always, check your local listing for dates and times. Scott Miller able to run off the field. Uh, I believe it was his left arm that was bothered. Chuck Paw, number 58, comes in to replace him. Second down and 15, they lose five. Yeah, I got number two weeks. And Pelt, they pick up the blitz to the outside. Henry Tootin wide open and down the sideline. Tootin could get in and will. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Well, Rutgers came with a red dog, and Henry Tootin was man to man. And he's a tough guy to cover by yourself. Well, he needed 26 yards to become the all-time single-season receiver in pit history. And this play will do it for him. There he is. He's against Ron Allen. Runs past Allen. Is Allen uh, not able to make the touchdown? Sellers had a crack at him. Shooting with a nice little two-step, if you will, into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, apparently, he stepped out of bounds. So it is not a touchdown. He stepped out of bounds inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. So it's first and goal. Mike Godfrey talking to himself. That'll happen when he seemingly had a touchdown. Now a loss of a yard. Richards hammered right away by Elnardo Webster. Junior's been pretty active so far in the first half. Watch the right hand of your side of your screen now. Number 93, Elnardo Webster fighting off the block and getting inside there. Webster doing a nice job that time against 75, Tony DeLazio. Getting inside and making the tackle for loss. DeLazio starting in place of Scott Miller. Scott Miller, one of the gentlemen who missed curfew the other night by a few minutes. Now Pittsburgh and Van Pell will call a timeout. 142 to go in the half, 22 to 15, and Pat Scanlon will now work his way down to the field to try to talk to Mike Gottfried as he jogs off. There's a good shot of Gottfried. Came to Pitt from Kansas, where he was the head coach there for several years. His fourth head coaching job. He was at Cincinnati for a couple of years in the early 80s. He was at Murray State from 78 to 80. And every place he's been, he has won. Well, you have Australian golf coming your way. This is the richest golf tournament in the world, the Johnny Walker Australian Golf Classic. And we'll have complete three-day coverage December 6th through 8th from the Royal Melbourne Golf Club. You want to check that out. Of course, it's summer in Melbourne, down under, this time of year. Coming up later this week, international golf action. Pittsburgh on top here, 22 to 15. And they had an apparent touchdown a moment ago on Henry Tootin's run up the sideline after a catch. 
But he evidently stepped out of bounds at the nine. They lost the yard, and it's now second and goal from the 10. Saw Bill Myers a moment ago, the big offensive line coach for Pittsburgh. Details about the child. He has his work cut out for him with this patchwork offensive line. Seven years of age. Would they please bring him to the car the so here we go with a minute 42 to go before halftime Pittsburgh second and goal ball outside the 10 yard line flags down now whistles and this play stop before it gets going there's Bill McDonald in the center of your screen and a procedure penalty against Van Pelt Good ball foul, false start, offense, second down. There's Godfrey. Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator, was saying yesterday when I was chatting with him that Van Pelt has gotten invaluable experience this year, not only playing as a redshirt freshman, but playing in so many big ball games. Last week against Penn State in a 16-13 affair, and also against two of the top five teams in the country, Notre Dame and Miami. Van Pelt to the outside, Richard, sideline, could get in and will. Second touchdown of the ball game for Kervin Richards, and now Pittsburgh moves in front 28 to 15 before halftime. Vaughn McCoy and John Blanton were the closest Scarlet Knights, but pretty easy for Kervin Richards. They ran a little pick play, I believe, to the outside. Let's see if we can pick it up. It'll be to the left of your screen. There's Richards in motion. Actually, the pick was Ron Allen. They ran into each other. Ron Allen ran in to one of his teammates trying to cover Richards in man coverage, and Richards sprung free, and Van Pelt, like a good quarterback will do, read it perfectly. Frazier has the extra point through, and it's 28 to 15. So after a seesaw battle, actually 29 to 15, check that. After a seesaw battle in the early part of the second quarter that saw Rutgers go back on top of the Panthers 15 to 14. Pitt has scored two consecutive touchdowns and both going to the sophomore sensation from Laborte, Texas, Kervin Richards. Take another look at that touchdown play. Van Pelt's going to drop back, and Ron Allen, you see him number one to the right of your screen. And let's see if we can see who's in man coverage. Well, you see Allen ran into whoever was supposed to be covering Richards, and then it's a cakewalk into the end zone. He's just got to find the uh, corner and get himself in. I think it was John Blanton who was originally in man coverage. That was one of those plays you dread when Monday morning rolls around and you're looking at film session because they run that back seemingly about 500 times and saying, what are we doing here? There's Van Horn, senior kicker who does the kicking off chores. Ron Allen is back deep along with Gary Melt. A yard is gained off the ground after only two seasons. For just joining us, Rutgers on their previous series had a fourth down and three. Or actually a fourth down and one. And about the 12 yard line of pit, they went for it. The ball was picked off in the end zone, so they were turned away. This is Allen, straight ahead. Flag came down on the play as he gets it across the 30 yard line on the short kick. Somebody must have lined up on Rutgers inside that 10-yard neutral zone. That's the only way Rutgers could be offside. You have to allow 10 yards between kicking team where they're kicking the football from and where the return unit lines up. Dick Anderson is shaking his head. 
Dick Anderson, when he finished in 1963 at Penn State, was drafted to play pro ball by the Cleveland Browns. He opted instead to uh, play somewhere else. Mainly, he played for the Newark Bears, a semi-professional team, while he pursued his graduate degree at Penn State. Ernie, all kinds of time, nobody open. Now Ernie to scramble, and he gets away. Steps. He was improvising his route, Riddick and Alonzo Hampton in coverage. If Ernie got it there on a rope, he would have had to have a gun to do it. The clock stops on the incompletion with 123 to go. Ball resting at about the 30-yard line. Rutgers has plenty of time to move it, and they would like to get, obviously, a touchdown, but a field goal would help them quite a bit, at least going into the locker room with some sort of momentum on their last drive. They really have not been stopped by the pit defense yet today, with the exception of that fourth down and one, the interception by Bradley in the end zone, and Henderson knocked down in the backfield. Somebody by the name of Tony Saragusa got tremendous penetration. He's been in the backfield much of the first 29 minutes of this ball game. There's the story. We're in Dublin, Ireland at Lansdowne Road Stadium. Drew Goodman along with Pat Scanlon, and Todd is making his way down to the field to try to get a word with Mike Gottfried as he goes off at intermission. Now Rutgers seemingly in not a big hurry. Clock winding inside 45 seconds. Henry Henderson, the lone setback. Third down, down the middle, and short. Good coverage by Bradley. Gary Melton was running a crossing route. Flags come down now late. And Bill McDonald, nice Irish name. Appropriate that he should be our referee on this day. See if he has it sorted out. in the secondary holding on the offensive line will do it again. The locals just call it Lansdowne Road. They wipe out the stadium portion. And as we told you at the top of our broadcast, the stadium has been here for 121 years and it's been renovated several times. It's a very nice facility. There's very few seats that are not under coverage. So on those rainy afternoons in Dublin, you probably won't get wet at Lansdowne Road. Third and 11 again. Ernie going deep, and it is picked off, but out of bounds. Picked off downfield by Doug Hetzler, the free safety. Henderson trying to get free. Hetzler sitting in a deep third of the zone, read it perfectly, and he'll go his fourth down, and Rutgers will have to punt it for the first time. question about it. Hetzler came down with a foot out of bounds. You have to get one foot in. Bill Chesna will punt number eight. He's had some problems this year. Only averaged about 30, 33 and a half yards. With a long of 56. Chesna, the lefty, gets away a low line drive. And it's taken by Hampton. A burst right up the middle. He loses the football and Rutgers is on it. At the Rutgers 45, they've recovered. Thirty-seven is Darren Sellers. He came up with the football. Pickell knocked it loose. Let's check this out again. Alonzo Hampton, very dangerous as a punt returner, one of the top returners in the nation. Pickell nailed him. Ball came loose, and Sellers was right there. So with 24 seconds left, Ernie to work. Another opportunity, high and away for Jimmy Can. Chris Piquel, a backup linebacker on the tackle, is the younger brother of Bill Piquel. He's been an all-pro several times with the LA Raiders. Second down and 10. Coming up at halftime, we have a couple of features on the experience of both of these teams in a foreign land. And that should be very interesting. Dublin, he said, the people of Ireland have been most hospitable and 
think everybody involved has really enjoyed their time. 21 seconds to go. Henderson in motion. Pressure from the outside. Ernie keeping it. Still going. And Ernie will have the 40-yard line of Pitt with 13 seconds to go. Clock will stop while they move the chains. Dave Coleman tackled them there. Keith Hamilton, who did not start, put a lot of pressure on. He's a true freshman from Lynchburg, Virginia. Watch Hamilton. He'll be on the left of your screen. He's 6'7", 275, and he has nine sacks this year. Ernie breaks containment and decides he'll tuck it up. He's done a good job today running the football. And he's got a first down with the ball on about the 40-yard line of Pittsburgh. 23, Dave Coleman finished him off. Rutgers calls a timeout. They have one remaining. They trail by two touchdowns, 29 to 15. 13 seconds left in the half. Ball at the 40. Now, Giesler, the kicker, Doug Giesler, hit one earlier from 48. He has one from 50-plus this year. He's got a pretty strong leg. They don't move it any further. This would be a 57-yard field goal. Imagine Dick Anderson will save that final timeout to get the field goal unit on the field. 13 seconds. They could easily get one, if not two, plays off if they really hustle. Might have to get it out of bounds, though. We got Ernie, seven carries today, 38 yards rushing. secondary right now. Henderson covered by a linebacker in motion. Ernie looking, throwing downfield, high and away. Tried to get it to Gary Melton. Pretty good coverage that time by Lewis Riddick, number five. And nine seconds are left, and Ernie has not come off the field, so they'll take another shot at the outside, try to move the ball a little bit closer for Doug Giesler. Lewis Riddick, economics major, has been on the Dean's List every semester at Pitt. Pittsburgh will go with the two deep secondary. They'll play man underneath. Ernie under pressure and is low of his target. Melton that time on a crossing pattern. And Ernie had to get rid of it. He was hit by Keith Hamilton. And now with five seconds left, Anderson still has not sent in his kicking units. Evidently, he feels it's a bit far for Giesler. 57 yards. Might see trips, three receivers to one side, and a Hail Mary pass here. Pittsburgh now drops three defensive backs deep, some 20, 25 yards off the ball. And Ernie learns the final timeout for Rutgers in the half. We'll come over, talk to Dick Anderson, Dick Curley, offensive coordinators upstairs. Rutgers wanted to get oh, 05, 8, 10 yards to set up a field goal around 48 yards or so for Giesler. This would be 57 right now. And Anderson thinks it's a little bit far. Well, stay tuned to Prime Network for live boxing action from the Great Western Forum in Los Angeles. Featured fights presented by Madison Square Garden. All of that coming your way in the month of December on Prime Network. Scott Ernie a bit frustrated. He had had plenty of time throughout much of the first half. On these last two possessions, he has been harassed a little bit. And not coincidentally by Keith Hamilton, who didn't start today. True freshman, 6'7", 275 from Lynchburg, Virginia, was a high school All-American and had nine sacks coming in. Some Pitt fans here made the trip over. Hamilton missed curfew last night, or a couple of nights ago and didn't get the start. So three receivers to the near side, final play in all probability of the first half. 
They need 40 yards for a touchdown. Ernie throwing it deep. He's got it towards the end zone, and I think it's picked off in the end zone. Yes, it is. Barry Threat came down with it. So Threat has a gift, and that'll do it for the first half. Conference, the Mid-American Conference. And he also had another tie out of the shoot, and then they won a couple of football games. Alex Van Pelt, there he is, number 10, hidden behind a couple of his teammates, 11 of 15, 255 yards, both scoring passes to Kervin Richards. Outstanding tailback. This is Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator's first year on the staff of Mike Godfrey. They've had a long relationship together. And after Dallas had all of those changes, Hackett came to Pittsburgh, and he throws a lot more of the running backs this year. We'll illustrate that point a little bit later. Ron Allen has the kickoff out across the 25-yard line. He's still on his feet. Now he's down about the 27, 28-yard line, and that is where Rutgers will start with it on offense. Again, their quarterback is Scott Ernie. They go with Jimmy Can and Henry Henderson in the backfield. Wideouts are Gary Melton, Tyrone McQueen, and Randy Jackson. You'll see Jim Garantano quite a bit up front. It's from right to left. It's Hyros, Tardy, Erickson at center, Erda, and Bill Milano. Tight end is Scott Blanche when they use one. Once again, we're at Lansdowne Road Stadium in Dublin, Ireland, the second half. Just beginning, second annual Emerald Isle Classic 2. Along with Pat Scanlon, I'm Drew Goodman. And here's reverse, reverse to Melton, and he's trying to shake free. Read pretty well. He'll get out to about the 28-yard line. Keith Hamilton stayed home, and his right defensive end was not cool. So Rutgers, Pat, glad you're back with me. Yeah, I did the uh, sprint up the stairs here at Lansdowne Road. Here's the, uh, the reverse, Ernie rolling right. Good block there. Handed off to Melton, cuts up inside behind a block by Steve Party. And he's able to get about three yards. Well, it's been a very physical game. We were just informed that uh, backup center, special teams player Eric Holdsworth from Pittsburgh has a broken nose and a concussion, will not return. To the outside, high and away. Gary Melton couldn't haul it in. On the timing pattern, he was running a little jet out from the slot position. Robert Bradley had the coverage, and Rutgers is facing now a third and seven, a long seven from their own 29-yard line. You know, Drew, it's funny you talk to, to football coaches, and they, sometimes they really hate to admit that they're, they're doing something differently. Dick Anderson loves to balance the pass with the run, but certainly in the first half, they, they turn to the passing game behind Scott Ernie, and Ernie uh, puts 15 points up on the board for him. We'll have to see if he can continue to avoid that pit rush and have some success. Pressure. Ernie has a man, and it is broken up, and is it picked off? No, incomplete. Rolling over was Doug Hepler to help out. Randy Jackson was free for a moment. But Jackson Hepler goes closed in a hurry. I'm sorry, Pat, go he ahead. He sure did. Jackson goes right down the left sidelines in front of the pit bench. Ernie, enough time to find his receiver, but there's Doug Hetzler, the junior from Pittsburgh. Just out of bounds, referee right there on the call. Hetzler already has one interception this season. Alonzo Hampton back deep. Bill Chesna only had one punt in the first half. It was a line drive job. Pittsburgh setting up a return. And this is not a good punt. But it takes a pretty good Rutgers bound. Hampton across the 40. Still going across midfield to the 48-yard line of Rutgers. The former Thomas Jefferson High School star in Denver, Colorado. Gets it across midfield and has his Panthers in good shape. Leonardo Webster down on special teams, the starting linebacker for the Scarlet Knights. Chesna, by the way, is also a quarterback who came out of Mountaintop High School just outside of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. is a highly recruited quarterback, and he's in the depth chart along with handling the punting duties for the Scarlet Knights. 18-yard return for Hampton. Kervin Richards, first carry, second half, has three, loses the football. Richards loses the football. Let's see if Pitt got it back. I believe they did. Second down. Let's see who gets up last. Bill Chirpak, the right guard. 
He'll take up your whole screen. 6'4 and 270. Let me set the uh, starters again. Alex Van Pelt's the quarterback. You'll see quite a bit of Adam Walker along with Kervin Richards, the tailback. Redmond is the fullback. Tootin, Baron Jackson, Orlando Truett at wideout. And they'll get to the offensive line after this play. Second down and eight. Here's the delay. Walker with a hole across the 35. Walker all the way to the 27-yard line. Perhaps Rusty Mays saved the touchdown. Chris Getz really sprung it loose. The left guard for Pitt. Up front, Tony DeLazio, a redshirt freshman at right tackle. Bill Chirpak, senior guard. Cecily at center, a redshirt freshman. Getz and DeVorio round out the offensive line. They opened a big hole from Adam Walker. He opened the first series with a touchdown for Pittsburgh, and here it is. Rusty Mays just tripping him up inside the 30-yard line. Good game by Adam Walker. And he'll get another carry. And Udovich hits him right in the hole. Pretty solid stick by Pat Udovich, six foot, 230-pound senior linebacker from Brookhaven, PA. Udovich with a little bit of help from number 92, Sean Williams at the outside linebacker position. Darren Sell is also coming to help out as we see the play. Miller there closing as he tries to cut right and is met by three Scarlet Knight jerseys. Pat Udovich, his brother Clem, was a captain for the Scarlet Knights a few years back. Walker, lone setback, deep in the eye, about nine yards. They go play action. Van Pelt, great fake, and he gets it to his tight end, Dave Moore. And Moore very close to a first down. I believe he has it. Van Pelt is a guy who really carries out fakes well. Paul Hackett stresses that. And he said, I didn't really have to stress it that much with Van Pelt because he's such a student of the game. He's been doing it since he was in grade school. Really deceptive in carrying out the fakes. He runs the play-action pass in its truest and purest form. You see the graphic. He's thrown for over 300 yards in not one game, but two games, in fact. So he's done what no other pit freshman has ever done twice this season. Gives to Walker. Walker cuts it back, and we'll get to about the 15-yard line. Elnardo Webster. Here defensively, also 92, Sean Williams, right there. Williams, Williams from Burlington, New Jersey. Defense, Williams has started the last two games for Rutgers. Associated Press first teamer from New Jersey. As important a drive or possession as Rutgers had offensively, this is very important to keep Pitt out of the end zone. If you fall behind by more than 14, very difficult to get back in. So Rutgers have to dig in here. Second and nine. Van Pelt, three-step drop, looking for the end zone. Complete and hammered by Sellers. The receiver was Orlando Truitt. And did he pay the price for going across the middle, right into that Rutgers secondary in the midst of the linebackers and the quarterbacks? Here it is. Van Pelt, good play action. Looks off one man, goes to the receiver, Truitt across the middle, and Sellers is right there. And he lays the helmet on him. But you like to see your receiver go over the middle and catch the football. The old adage is, you might as well catch it because you're going to get hit anyhow. Goal line defense employed by Rutgers. Marty Mays comes in at a D tackle. They go to Walker. Walker maybe has the line of scrimmage. That's all. Pat Udovich again defensively. Darren Sellers up from his strong safety. You know, Sellers, number 37, was a walk on the Rutgers. Broke in in a big way with a couple of tackles and an interception in his first game against Cincinnati back in 1986. And he's been a regular for Rutgers ever since. Ricky Turner's in the ball game. They have a power eye formation. Derek Lewis, the up back. Adam Walker at the tail in the power eye. And now Van Pelt wants to throw a touchdown. Has a man open in the back of the end zone. And pretty good coverage. Recovering there was Rusty Mays to pick up Tom Hubner, the tight end who tried to sneak out there. It's kind of tough, though, Pat, when you're 6'6", 255, to sneak around a secondary. That's right. Here it is again. Good play fake by Van Pelt. Rolling right. Williams has the pressure on him. Throws it back. Corner of the end zone for Hubner. Good coverage by Rusty Mays. Mays diminutive, able to break up the play. So this is a big down for Rutgers. They want to keep Pitt out of the end zone, and they do. Big hit at about the one and a half yard line by.
by Mike Bouchard. 46, nailed Derek Lewis. Chest to chest, and he drove him backwards. He got nowhere. Derek Lewis running right at the line of scrimmage. And there's number 46, Bouchard. Bouchard sticks his shoulder in there and drives Lewis back. Big play. Here it is, another angle. They try to run behind Mike Lavorio. Boy, that Bouchard standing up and making the play. That's a big time hit right there by Bouchard, the senior. There he is. Still getting his next. Flexed out. Flexed out. 29 yard field goal, and Frazier is 5 of 6 this year from this distance. And he's now 6 of 7. And Pitt widens their lead to 18. They're up 32 to 15. How about 17? The addition's not too good. In any event, <laughs> Pitt's up. nature a home aquarium lets you enjoy beautiful fish in a natural setting fascinating educational entertainment for the whole family and for your aquarium there's nothing better than world famous tetra products be a part of tetra's wonderful world of tropical fish if fish could talk we'd ask for tetra holiday shopping is easy at total pets in union there's a huge inventory for all your pet needs a layaway plan and gift certificates too slam bam Thank you, ma'am. Catch it if you can, or just run and hide. Hit for a hit, nobody brings it to you like the NFL. And nobody brings the NFL to you like ESPN, tackling 13 games of high-flying action. ESPN is your ticket to the NFL. Somerset Nissan is a proud sponsor of the NFL on ESPN. At the four. And he finds himself in a lot of trouble. Gets it out to about the 13-yard line. Bradley down defensively on specials. There's Scott Ernie. And Pitt's defense has really stiffened the last several times Rutgers has had the football dating back to the first half. Well, this is a big series for Rutgers, Drew. They've got to uh, turn it up a notch, as you say. That the pressure on the passer has been uh, increasing late in that second quarter and certainly in that first series. And now Rutgers trailing 32 to 15. And just under nine minutes left in this third quarter. They've got to put something together soon. Gary Melton to the near side. Jim Cannon in motion. Blitz is coming to the tight end, Scott Blanche. And Blanche will have about seven or eight yards. You know, the Panthers have been answering this Rutgers passing attack with the nickel coverage. They were in nickel, the free safety, playing a center field position that time. Ernie on a drop back to Scott Blanche, the senior from Cherry Hillies High School in New Jersey, picking up eight on first down. They give to Henderson. Henderson with a quick burst gets it to the 25-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down for Rutgers. Initial first down of this half. It was three downs and out. And they touched it after the second half kickoff. Craig Gobb made the tackle for Pitt. He alternates his middle linebacker with Nelson Walker. Two juniors have done a pretty good job. Of course, Gobb filling in for Jerry Olsapski, who's playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers now. He was an All-American for this Panther defense. And Gobb and Nelson Walker doing a great job in the middle. Dump to the back. Henderson is wrapped up after about a yard gain. Prentice Wright, backup linebacker. Closed in a hurry. You know, Prentice says, he goes, I get chills in the huddle when they call a blitz. They didn't call a blitz that time, but the previous play, Prentice was blitzing. That's a, kind of, that's, that's a linebacker type of response. I get chills when they call a blitz in the huddle. And Dick Curl, the Rutgers offensive coordinator, gets a chill when he sees second and a long nine, because he knows the Panthers are coming. 
Panthers in their base defense of 4-3. They send one backer. Ernie, all kinds of time, is hit as he releases it, and his receiver can falls downfield. Keith Hamilton made Ernie pay for it. And a flag on the play may have been a late hit along the sidelines, Drew. Officials discussing it now, but the flag was thrown in that vicinity. Let's see what Bill McDonald had. And he was over the line of scrimmage. That was what the penalty was. Ernie had gone beyond the 26-yard line when he released the football. You know, this field is lined in such a matter that the hash marks are of a college alignment, but the numbers, the numerical yardage listings, are right along the hash marks as they would be on a professional field. Illegal forward pass, offense thrown beyond the line of scrimmage, five-yard penalty, lots of down. So it'll be third and 14, let's watch. It is Ernie rolling right. And the question is, where did he throw it from? Here comes Keith Hamilton. And Hamilton hammers him as he lets go of the ball. That'll cost Rutgers, they'll loss it down. Third and 11. As the penalty comes from the point of infraction, that's why it's not third and 14 here. They're showing blitz, and they come with a blitz, and he gets rid of it in a hurry. But Randy Jackson didn't even have time to turn, and Pitt turns away at Rutgers again. The Scarlet Knights will have to punt the football. Doug Hetzler really put pressure on free safety blitz. So Chesna comes in. Alonzo Hampton goes back, and Hampton returned one 18 yards last time. Ten men up on the line of scrimmage for Pitt. Perhaps they'll come. They back out of it and set up a return. Hampton from his 42. Middle return set up, and he'll get across midfield and slip to about the 48 of Rutgers. Six forty-five to go in the third quarter. Rutgers trailing with Pittsburgh up by 17 over Rutgers, along with Pat Scanlon on Drew Goodman, and Pitt has excellent field position. Van Pelt from the Rutgers 48 wants a bunch, has Tootin out there. Tootin can't hang on. He was turned around, but he had a couple of strides on Vaughn McCoy, the free safety. Henry Rootin Tootin from Camden, New Jersey. He was there. Van Pelt sets the play up well as you see McCoy hesitate for a second on the play action. Then Van Pelt just rears back and fires. Tootin turns around, but in fact it was Vaughn McCoy, his shoulder pad, getting into the play and the ball bounced off it for an incompletion. Second down of 10 for Rutgers 48 yard line. Second and 10, double tight end alignment right now for Pitt. Richard with room on the right side, and he'll get the 41-yard line. Shy of a first down, Mike Bouchard defensively for the Scarlet Knights. Shervin Richards, over 1,000 yards in 88, 1,228 to be exact. He's over 1,000 this year, along with Tony Dorsett. The only two pit backs ever to have two 1,000-yard seasons, of course. Dorsett rushed for some 6,000 plus yards in his career, over 1,000 every year. Tony D announced his retirement this past week. He's waiting for the surgery. Wish him well. Udovich knocked it down, trying to get it to Lionel Sykes. Good defense by Udovich that time. He's right alongside Sykes. Got the right hand out. That is the ball away as Van Pelt delivered it. There's a look at Marty Mays, who has shaken up the play before, able to run off the field, but Pete Kapitzis back in the game for Dick Anderson. And Brian Greenfield in the ball game. He'll try to cough and corner it. Marshall Roberts back at his own 10. And the second time Greenfield had the punt, they come after him. Greenfield gets away a beautiful kick, high and deep. And unfortunately for him, it goes in and out of the end zone. So Rutgers will get it at their own 20-yard line. And it's a punt of 41 yards for Greenfield. 
junior punter from Sherman Oaks, California. He's a long way from home. You know, Drew, we've had a little bit of everything here today from the uh, from the opening flip of the coin with the uh, U.S. Uh, or Ireland's ambassador to the U.S., Richard Moore, and uh, Tony O'Reilly, a former Irish national rugby captain, now the chairman and president of the board of Hines. All sorts of pageantry and excitement, and now Rutgers has to get things going. They really do. Now's the time if they want to get back in it. And Henderson doesn't get much going there. Craig Gobb read it perfectly, or check that Richard Allen there defensively. Sophomore D tackle from Cleveland. Everything was clicking for Scott Ernie and Rutgers the first four or five times they had the football. And there, the wave is uh, California like almost. <laughs> That's a custom island probably could have done without. When the Irish approve, they'll whistle instead of applauding. And we've heard quite a bit of whistling today. Henderson, this time they throw the ball to him, and he gets about a yard. Gobb there. His father, Art Gobb, was a pit defensive end in 1957 and 58, and then played in the NFL for the LA Chargers and also the Washington Redskins. Henderson had trouble finding the handle, but Gobb found Henry. Yes, he did. Sure, his son. Dad was pretty proud of his son. There's Scott Miller. Miller coming back from reconstructive knee surgery. Third down and nine. Rutgers has to have a first down here. Delayed blitz coming. Ernie down the middle, complete. Great throw and a super catch by Jim Garantano. Ernie waited to the last possible instant in the pocket and finally found Garantano on the crossing pattern. Panthers in a zone here, three deep, man under and zone on top, and Ernie does a nice job of delivering the ball to James Garantano, the sophomore from Lodi, and he's coming on at the end of his sophomore year. 21-yard gain, picture-perfect pass. Blitz coming to the outside, complete again to Garantano, the hot receiver, Lewis Riddick the coverage and the Pittsburgh sideline felt that he bobbled the football and never had possession. There's Garantano. 5'11 and 175 pounds. Had six catches against Temple two weeks ago. The Scarlet Knights found themselves trailing the Owls 21-0 and really put the ball up. Ended up losing that ball game 36-33, but did come back. Hey, turnover problems that afternoon. Ernie, very close to that line of scrimmage again. It's complete. No flags are down, so evidently he tight roped it. Tyrone McQueen pulled it in in front of Dave Coleman. Keith Hamilton again applying the pressure. And we see quickly why. The 6'7", 275-pound freshman had nine sacks coming in. Well, he's the last guy you want coming from the blind side. Number 92, Keith Hamilton, freshman from Lynchburg, Virginia. He's got the great acceleration to the ball and the long reach. And here's Ernie with good coverage downfield. There's, there's 92. Able to get it away, a Hamilton right there as well. I guess it should be illegal, Pat, for a guy 275 pounds and 6'7 to run a 4'8", 40-yard dash. That's ridiculous. In any event, it was a 23-yard gain and first and 10 from the 29 of Pitt. The crowd, the line of scrimmage, blitz comes. Henderson tried to sneak through the middle. Doesn't get a whole lot. Scott Ernie runs to the sideline to pick up the play. You can hear, perhaps, in the background, the PA boys, gentlemen, certainly from Ireland. He has picked up uh, American football quite well. He's got Ernie jogging over to talk to his offensive coordinator. Yeah, that's right. He has all the terminology down. We've heard him throughout the ball game. He's, he's doing the PA. He's also educating the fans here. Okay, second and nine. Henderson, open. Henderson 
making things happen out of the backfield. Pitt was blitzing the linebackers. Scott Ernie gets it quickly to Henderson. Henderson in the left flat. Petzler in pursuit for Pitt. Has a piece of the jersey. Tell you what, if he's got a tearaway, he's in for the touchdown. All the way down to the, call it the two-yard line. First and goal for the Scarlet Knights. Talking about tearaways. Remember uh, Earl Campbell used to go through about a dozen jerseys every game when he was at Texas. They give to Can over the top. He's flipped up in the air. No indication yet, and he's shy of the goal line. Rutgers tried to go that time between the behind the offensive guard. Center Dave Clark has been lining up in that Angus formation for them. But Jimmy Can up over the top. Good job to Ron Allen. Bring a little mom back home. Hi, mom. Ten pounds. <laughs> ten, that's right. Ten pounds. <laughs> So it'll be second down and goal. Ball at about the three-yard line. Dwight Giles is in the ball game at fullback. Pitt takes a timeout here, so evidently they didn't have the first a long time ago now. 32-15, Pitt leading Rutgers. Drew Goodman and Pat Scanlon with you on Prime Network this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you're watching. And the Irish that have gathered here, certainly enjoying themselves. Second down and goal, ball to three. Rutgers trying to get back in it. Full house backfield, Angus backfield. Ernie can run for it, and he'll get in. Scott Ernie, the fifth-year senior from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Barrels into the end zone, and we're not done yet. 32-21. 53 seconds to go in the third. Well, they'd run out of that formation to play before with Dave Clark in the backfield. This time, same formation. They fake the play action, and Ernie rolling right. Good speed met by Riddick, but into the end zone for the touchdown. Good block downfield by the tight end, Scott Blanche, the senior, and that allows Scott Ernie to get in for six. Ernie scoring his third touchdown rushing, and the extra point by Giesler's up and through, and it's 32-22, so Rutgers is still in it, down by 10. 53 seconds to go in the third. Plenty of time left. Drew, very interesting on the touchdown play. Judging from the reaction of these, these Irish fans, they, they're cheering every play. They're cheering every score. They're cheering good defense. They really don't have a favorite uh, team, but they're certainly appreciating uh, good football. I think they want Rutgers to come back and make a game of it, so they're happy about that. Let's pick up that rollout touchdown one more time. Scott the Blanche, the tight end, he starts as a receiver, and then he's going to turn and put a pretty good block on Riddick. Occupies him long enough for Ernie to get in. Yeah, I think if Blanche doesn't get that block, Ernie is stopped at the one-yard line by Riddick. Instead, it's Scott Ernie again, and as we said earlier in the broadcast, good day for Scott. Already uh, tying the record at Rutgers for touchdowns in a season, with, and he hooked up with Randy Jackson. I think the situation or the change, the adjustment made by Rutgers to pick up the blitz by the Panthers was to hit Henderson quite a bit, sneaking out of the backfield. Henderson was instrumental on that 80-yard drive. As a matter of fact, he now has six receptions for 56 yards in the game. Geisler will kick it deep to either Jermaine Williams or Glenn DeVoe. DeVoe will be on the left of your screen. And this will be DeVoe at the seven. Pick up that scoring drive for the Scarlet Knights. 10 plays, 80 yards. That's picture perfect. Good use of the clock, and Ernie gets the honors. So we're at 32-22. Good job with the receivers. 
Now Pitt comes out with three tight ends. Richard is the lone setback. And he gets the call. And Kirby does his thing for a moment. Picks up four or five yards. Mike Bouchard got him around the ankle. Richards had 264 yards on 38 carries several weeks back against East Carolina. A 47-42 shootout won by Pitt. Clock winding down inside 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ricky Williams flanked out to the near side. They go toss sweep again. Richards, he'll have the first down. Kirvin. Boy, he's got such great lateral movement and the ability to see the whole field and pick his hole. He may get hit after a five-yard gain, but by the time he gets done rumbling... At this point, the board's been used quite a bit. Pittsburgh with a first and 10, their own 45-yard line. We're set final 15 minutes from Dublin, Ireland. Richards into the secondary. Kirvin Richards to the outside. And he's run out of bounds by Rusty Mays at the 35-yard line of Rutgers. That's what Kirvin Richards does so well. Here he is, seven yards deep, line of scrimmage, starts right, cuts left. Watch him read the open field. The ability to move to the left, pick up a block, get to the outside, outrun Sellers, but Rusty Mays takes a good angle on it. Kirvin Richards, though, with a big pick up for the Panthers. 77 yards so far to go with a couple touchdowns. He has 19 after that carry, 19 yards on that particular carry. Good strike down the middle from Van Pelt to Lionel Sykes' his tight end. Darren Sellers tackled him there, but Pitt comes right back down the field. That's the Paul Hackett influence on the Pittsburgh offense. Run by Richard, one play. This time they come back with the tight end, Lionel Sykes. Big target off the line of scrimmage, six feet four inches tall. Sellers and Yudovich combined. Well mixed offense for the Panthers. Richards dances through and inside the 10 to the nine yard line. The numbers on Van Pelt, 14 of 21 now, nearing 300 yards. He's got 296, and should he go over 300 yards, he would tie some pretty good quarterback in the Pitt record books who threw for three 300 yard games, not this season, but in their career. And those three gentlemen, John Kinjemi, Matt Cavanaugh, and one Dan Marino. Joe Savoy, Rutgers senior, shaking up on the play. That'll give Alex Van Pelt the opportunity to go over and, and talk to Paul Hackett. Coach Mike Godfrey. Yeah, he played with a pretty good quarterback. He's originally from West Virginia, but in San Antonio, another kid who came out of San Antonio at the same time was Ty Detmer, who's setting all sorts of records this year at BYU. Van Pelt grew up in Grafton, West Virginia, wanted to play for the Mountaineers in a bad way. His dad was sending uh, letters to the, uh, the Mountaineer coaching staff. Of course, they had a kid by the name of Major Harris. They'd already recruited, but he came back to haunt the Mountaineers earlier this year. Pitt trailed 31 to nine early fourth quarter and came back to tie West Virginia 31 all. Van Pelt directing four straight scoring drives. That's something else for a fifth-year senior, but for a redshirt freshman. Richard hurdling to about the five-yard line. He's got great spring in his leg, a great burst. Dick Anderson, Ed O'Neill looking on. Mike Godfrey across the way. We'll take another look. Here comes Kervin Richards right over the top behind that big offensive line. The Panthers both. He leaps, spots Spidell, gets a piece of him. Rusty Mays tried to say he came up with the ball, but he'll get another Rutgers player shaking up on the play. And it may be Spidell. Hard to tell from that angle. A 
Well, college basketball fans come home to the action on Prime Network. Join us for our coverage of the Pac-10, the Big 8, Metro, Southwestern Conference, the Western Athletic, the Mid-American, and WCAC conferences. Check your local listings. On college basketball, that's in full swing now. An excellent tournaments going on right as we speak. You know, Bob Spidell limping off the field now for the Scarlet Knights. And, you know, speaking of basketball, of course, Pittsburgh picked at the uh, top of the heap in the Big East, one of the top three teams in preseason polls, and Scarlet Knights of Rutgers picked as the number two team in the Atlantic 10 behind Temple. They played Syracuse very tough a couple of nights ago. Syracuse number one team in the country right now. Power eye formation employed right now. Lionel Sykes is lined up straight ahead. They get to the fullback, and Derek Lewis pounds ahead for maybe one or two. Bouchard for the Knights brought him down, and Dick Anderson with great concern on his face. And he was the offensive coordinator for a long time under Joe Paterno. Anderson is sixth year at Rutgers. As we see uh, Derek Lewis, these two teams holding his hand, yeah, yeah. shaking up a little bit. They've really gotten after one another. Been a number of hobble offs today. There's Mike. He really cares about his athletes. He's one of the first to run a football camp that stressed academics and SAT preparation in his summer football camp. And his teams, as all good teams will do, have done an outstanding job in the final period. See the illustration there. Second and goal, ball at the two. Bundy is now in a loaded fullback. Adam Walker, the tailback. Sykes is the other back in the power eye. Here's to Walker, he's hammered and gets it into the end zone with the second effort. Udovich laid the leather, but Walker shook it off and fell across the goal line. So Pittsburgh has an answer for Rutgers. After Rutgers closed within 10, Alex Van Pelt orchestrates the scoring drive for the Panthers. There it is, Walker, the tailback in that power eye formation. Good hit by Udovich, but Walker kept the feet moving and got in for the two-yard score. Here's Ed Frazier on, high snap, nice placement done, gotten down by Hetzler. And Frazier has it through, it's now 39-22. So Pitt back up by 17 points with 13-14 to go from the second annual Emerald Isle Classic in Dublin, Ireland. Things happen. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a fine, catch me a catch. Matchmaker, matchmaker. New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. Every day it goes to work. Every day it matches more buyers with more sellers. Every day we use it and use it and use it more. Excuse me, can I use this? The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic company. This is MSG. Well, Ireland is world famous for their pub. This is O'Neill's pub. I guess the host pub of this event has been Kitty O'Shea's. I'm sure they're watching down there right now. As Ireland is picking up the broadcast. And uh, I have to admit, I've had a couple of uh, pints myself. <laughs> That's right. A little Guinness or a little black and tan? No, Guinness, uh, Guinness is a great drink, but uh, I guess I can't handle it that well. It's, it's a little little bit rich for me. 39-22. Yeah, I prefer the clear stuff. Spitties. Yeah. Pittsburgh in control. 13-14 to go. Drew Goodman, Pat Scanlon along. Short kickoff. 
Gary Melton from his 16-yard line. Melton with an opening for a moment. We'll have Rutgers in pretty good field position. Well, Pittsburgh came right back down the field after Rutgers had a long drive of 80 yards for a touchdown. They go 77, and Adam Walker crashes across from a couple of yards away. Well, Rutgers down by 17 with 13 minutes left in the game. They need three scores to get back in this one. So they've got to go down the field and do it in a hurry. Well, the problem hasn't been Scott Ernie in the offense. They've done all they can. But the defense had trouble with Pitt. To the outside, complete to Tyrone McQueen, senior from Rahway, New Jersey, an economics major. McQueen with his 40th reception of the year. Pittsburgh playing a little man-to-man -man in the secondary. They like to do that. Ernie rolls out. Ricardo McDonald putting a little bit of heat on, but good route from McQueen. Gets along the sidelines and out of bounds to stop the clock. Henderson, the lone setback. To the outside, complete. Melton, nice little move. Bradley did a good job of grabbing a hold of the jersey. It'll be a first down. About the 46-yard line, 45-yard line. Still in Rutgers territory. Now Ernie doing a good job of working the sidelines against this Panther defense. They've gone to the nickel. Playing a little zone here. It's Melton. Nice spin move away from Robert Bradley. You saw Tyree, Tyrone McQueen up ahead already starting to block Alonzo Hampton. That was because these are designed timing plays. They know who they're going to immediately. Nearly pulled in by Can in front of Riddick. Ernie had to throw that football a little bit earlier than he wanted to release it. We talked about Pitt's injuries and Mark Spindler, the first-team All-American defensive tackle, who's out with a knee injury. We have other guys out who are... Form, I guess he's got to form quite an all-star team. Dean Calguire, maybe the best center in the entire country, has an Achilles heel problem. Whether he's back this year is a question mark. Eric Seaman, starting tight end, has an ankle injury. He thinks he'll be ready by the John Hancock Sun Bowl December 30th. Roman Matu, one of the better linemen in the country. Exactly. He is out. He suited up. Ball dropped by Can but probably won't play today. Steve Israel, a okay. cornerback, is bagged up, not going today. The Pitt has some excellent talent on the sideline. Scott Ernie, he's done a great job today. That one touchdown pass to Randy Jackson, the first touchdown he's ever thrown against Pitt, and this is his 37th start, third time he's competed against the Panthers. He missed the 87 game, he was out with an injury. He tied the school record, Rich Castro held it. He's down a few boots over doing radio now. Third and 10, flag down, ball is through the hands of Henderson. The umpire threw the flag, and the umpire throws a flag. It's generally in the area of holding. See what Bill McDonald indicates. And indeed, it is holding. Holding. During the pass. Penalty decline. Fourth down. And that penalty, as you would expect, so Bill Chesna comes in. Alonzo Hampton back deep with Henry Tootin now. A dual return set up. There's Hampton. And off to Hampton's left is Henry Tootin. Tootin brought one back 60 yards this year for a touchdown. Chesna, this is his best effort today. Hampton drops the football and he gets it back. Gets it back at his own 14-yard line. Could have been disastrous for the Panthers. Glenn Miller, number two, was right there on Hampton, but Hampton had the presence to fall on the ball, didn't try to reach down and pick it up, but did the right thing and smothered the ball with his body. 
Watch it come down again. Perhaps the most difficult single thing to do in football is catch a punted ball. Ball wobbles, sometimes it knuckles, and when the point comes down, it's like a projectile coming out of the sky. Hampton couldn't handle that one. But fortunately for Heath, he's able to fall on it. Richard's trying to cut back. He stacked up after a couple. Richards is over 90 yards rushing today. and receiving, he's about 69 yards, as Mike Gottfried looks on. And, of course, his head coaches will do. Never real pleased until the final gun sounds. But his team in control, up by 17 inside of 12 minutes. He keeps the ball on the ground as well, Drew, to keep the clock moving. We're under 12 minutes now in the fourth quarter. Terrific afternoon. Richards hit hard. Udovich still has a hold of him. And finally, Pat Udovich, along with Joe Savoy, bring him down. Udovich, with 350 career tackles coming in, picks up yet another. He's been active this afternoon. The ball game started at 12 o'clock local time, and it was moved up from the original starting time of one. The reason is, we're way up in the northern part of the globe, and there's only about seven and a half hours of daylight this time of year. The sun doesn't come up to slightly after eight in the morning, and by four o'clock, it's pitch dark out. And there are no lights here at Lansdowne Road Stadium. The 121-year-old Lansdowne Road Stadium. Adam Walker now checks in, third down and six. Van Pelt, time, and a man. Henry Tootin across the 40. Tootin can motor. He's across midfield all the way to the 42-yard line of Rutgers. Saving tackle by Marshall Roberts. Henry Rutten Tootin. Went to the same high school in Camden, New Jersey as Mike Rogier. Here it is, Tootin on a crossing pattern. You get a good look at it from Van Pelt's perspective. Right into the middle of that Rutgers defense. He had a couple of steps on Rusty Mays. Rusty just reaches out, can't get him, but John Blanton, Marshall Roberts there to make the tackle. Van Pelt wants it all. He's got a man out there, and he overthrows Olanda Truitt. That's tough to do. Olanda can flat out fly. He had a couple of steps on free safety Vaughn McCoy. With that 34-yard pass completion on the previous play to Henry Tootin, Van Pelt, well over 300 yards. Unofficially, we have him about 330. And now, along with Ken Jemmy and Kavanaugh Marino, the only quarterbacks in the history of Pitt to throw for three 300-yard games in a career. And he's done it in one season. I bet the Jets would still pass on him in the first round if they did Marino. <laughs> Five quarterbacks went before Dan Marino in that 83 draft. Van Pelt underneath. That's great defense. Super defense by Sean Williams dropping back in coverage. The linebacker found himself on true at a wideout. Reached in front without interfering and knocked it down. Well, Sean Williams from Burlington, New Jersey. He's one a good the, athlete, Pat. One of the blue chip recruits that Dick Anderson has been able to get out of the state. And he showed why he's going to be a good player. Only a sophomore. We've talked about it much this week. If Rutgers and Anderson want to take that next step, which they do to upgrade, they have to keep some more folks at home. New Jersey is blessed with tremendous football talent on the high school level. So the pit roster. Good job by Van Pelt, finding an empty area to get rid of the football. He was under heavy pressure by Williams, who blitzed. Yeah, Williams again, coming from his outside linebacker position, number 92. He'll be coming from the right of your screen. There's Judovich straight up the middle. Van Pelt rolling to his left. Very difficult pass. Here comes Williams. Van Pelt gets it away. So Greenfield into the ball game. Roberts back deep, his own 10-yard line. Two lefty punters. You see that that frequently. Tough one to catch, and Roberts does a nice job of fielding it. 
put Bradley down on special teams. Robert Bradley, starting cornerback, done a pretty good job. And we have a personal foul flag, I believe, down. Might be. Look at that. Rich Humphreys, number 97, could have roughed uh, Greenfield when he got rid of it. So that'll keep the Pittsburgh live alive. Hey, that's an automatic first down. Joe McDonald doing a good job of sorting things out. costly because Rutgers needs the football. They're down by 17 points. They can't afford an error like this. Greenfield gets it away. Oh, I think it was the blow to the head. That is what the call was. Really, they called it roughing, but it was the blow to the head. Well, it looked like Humphreys bumped into him at first, and then the, through a right hand, Greenfield responded. Then they did a little uh, headbutting, a la Jim McMahon. Well, let me straighten something out. That was a post-possession foul. So Rutgers has the football. And then they walk off half the distance to the goal line. So the short return by Roberts is walked off. The, the point of infraction is uh, walked off from there. The penalty is walked off from there. That's right. Had it been a roughing the kicker penalty, it would have been they, they, Exactly. It was a blow to the head. It was a personal foul. So Rutgers back deep in their own territory from their eight-yard line. Underneath to the tight end, Blanche. And he draws the crowd. Prentice Wright there initially, number seven. Also Craig Gobb. Mentioned God that his father played at Pitt. His brother Scott, linebacker at Penn State. So that offensive line, excuse me, has certainly had their work cut out for them. Milano 75, Tardy 73, and Erdin Hyros on the other side of the center, Jeff Erickson. That front four pit puts a lot of pressure on. Ernie rolling, now will tuck it up, and he'll get about three yards. That'll set up a third down in eight or nine. Mike Boykin defensively. He along with his brother Bobby Boykin. You know, Pitt defensive coordinator Bob Valisena he said that they've been selling all-out effort to their players. That by the end of the game, they want the defensive players exhausted. Give it all, and if you've got to come out of the game, we'll substitute for you because they have the benefit of some nice depth on the uh, defensive side of the ball. There's a penalty situation this afternoon. 7 to go fourth quarter. Rutgers down by 17, 39-22. Ernie in trouble on third and nine. Hamilton can run. He's the one chasing. Now Ernie gets her way and diving for the football, Tyrell and McQueen. Also in the neighborhood was Randy Jackson. Robert Bradley, the closest Panther. Scott Ernie scrambling for his life against the pressure of Keith Hamilton and Mark Gunn. Drops back, they do a good job on the outside, but here comes Hamilton, the freshman, and 90 Gunn in pursuit. Hamilton with those long legs can really ramble, and Ernie makes a good play just to get rid of the ball, throwing on the run. Has been produced by Prime Network in association with Advantage International. And with 8.57 to go in the fourth quarter, Bill Chesna in the punt for Rutgers. And Pitt has 10 guys up front. They called a timeout right before Chesna came on the field. So perhaps they're coming. No, now they back out of it. Chesna gets away a wobbler. Hampton now gets away from it. They're going to take the favorable roll for the Scarlet Knights to the 46-yard line. That's where Pitt will have it. They're up by 17. Smart play by Hampton that time. After the punt touched the ground, Hampton just stayed away from it. And the Panthers take over on their 46-yard line. Good shot of Pat Udovich. Well, the people that have come out really enjoying a good ball game. Plenty of scoring. 8.48 to go. 
Shooting to the near side, double tight end. Kervin Richards. Pecking away, moving closer to another 100 yard game. He's across midfield. Kiko fixes on the nose, and Pat Yudovich making the tackle. Vaughn McCoy also in there. Laborio, you see him in your screen, those big shoulders filling the huddle up. 6'5", 270, and he's only a freshman. Right shift. Keeping it on the ground. This is Jimmer Bundy. Better get three or four guys and some other reinforcements to tackle Bundy. And a chain. Yeah. Maybe about 240 or so. Darren Sellers. Jimmer Bundy is another... New Jersey kid on the pit roster. He's from Woodbury, New Jersey. Rushed for 3,000 yards in high school. Bundy will the carry. Really need a gang to bring down Bundy at 5'11", 240. You don't see a lot of uh, guys raising their hand to go against him in pride drills in practice, <laughs> I would imagine. Keep it on the ground, Bundy. Well, he was stood up and Webster really paid for that a tackle. Tom Tarver is warming up for Rutgers, the backup quarterback. Guy with a great arm. Figures to be the quarterback the next year. Hasn't seen much action this year. Dick Anderson is gone with Scott Ernie most of the way. Tom's got in a few games in a, a mop-up situation, but very, very limited playing time as Anderson has chosen to, to go with Ernie. Second and eight. This is Walker breaking tackles, first down yardage close to the 20-yard line, and perhaps beyond. Sellers and McCoy, the two safeties, have to bring him down. Walker from Steel Valley High School, business finance major. He's a senior, have one more game left at the John Hancock Sun Bowl. Pittsburgh back to in good shape and he can run Richards and Walker. Walker's really handled the fact that he lost his job after injury to Richards very, very well. Consummate team player. Spin move, will net him a couple. Mike Godfrey getting what he wants right now. The clock moving. A couple of yards before he's brought down by Kofitsis. Kofitsis on the tackle that time, so it was 93. Elnardo Webster. Webster's been around the ball all day. Ball's on the 17-yard line. And there's the Panther. Seven to go. We have many people to thank. Uh, not only the broadcast is concerned, but the entire Emerald Isle Classic. And there's Vaughn McCoy, number 12, again. I want to thank Tony O'Reilly, the CEO of Heinz, for Heinz's sponsorship of the game. And of course, O'Reilly, as Pat mentioned a while earlier, was an outstanding rugby player. And the Irish Tourist Board and the Irish American Partnership for their support. 77 yards rushing unofficially now for Walker. Third down a yard. Walker will be close to that yard. Sean Williams has played himself a pretty good game. Williams was right there, wrapped him up at the line of scrimmage. Outside linebacker. Just five minutes to go. They hand it off to Adam Walker. He cuts it right side and met right at the line of scrimmage by Sean Williams. So that time Walker with no place to go up the middle, elected to cut it outside. Bouchard also in on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Fourth and one, they're going to go. Tootin comes across in motion. Walker will have the first down and more. Did he get the yard? So Pitt will have a first and goal when they spot the football and the clock is stopped at 4.33 to go and it's all but a formality now for Mike Godfrey. Real good guy. One of the good guys in college football. 
There you see Paul Hackett to Godfrey's right. Got quite a staff going there at Pitt. Clock now wound up again. First and goal from the eight. We want to thank not only Hines, but Schweppes, also Anheuser-Busch. They give to Bundy. Bundy plows ahead for a couple. We want to thank Advantage International, naturally. RTE, our co-broadcaster today, and the folks at RTE have just been splendid in all their help as we prepared for this broadcast during the week. Their facilities are where this broadcast is actually originating. I want to thank all the good people, all our cameramen, naturally. The Irish American Partnership, mentioned them. The Arthritis Foundation of Ireland, the official charity of the second annual Emerald Isle Classic. There's one of our Fine camera crew. Bundy, did he get in? I think he might have. He's very close. Did he carry a pop at 240? I think they're fudging there, too. I think he's uh, eating his way a little bit past 240. But when you can run like Jim or Bundy can, you can afford to carry that kind of weight. Well, he's 240, but before breakfast. That's right. At the end of the day, he might be up to around 250. Clock moving now inside, three minutes to go. Pitt in control. A lot of fun in the first half. Rutgers was ahead 15-14, but Pitt has worn him down, and Bundy gets it across. And Pitt is up to 45 now as they stretch their lead. Jimmer Bundy cutting the mold of Craig Ironhead Hayward. Big running back out of Passaic, New Jersey. Played for the Panthers, now with the Saints. Now here's Bundy from Woodbury, New Jersey, and just barrels ahead. And, you know, this is this may be a, a score in the, uh, not only a touchdown for Pitt, but Mike Godfrey might be handing the ball off to, uh, to Bundy and in, in the recruiting side of things, too. Here's the New Jersey kid playing against New Jersey's team and make sure he gets the ball when it's decided and gets in for six. Frazier, line drive kick, gets it through. The tickets for the American football game as they point it over here. And nobody really is left. They're thoroughly enjoying seeing American football. And I mentioned this earlier. There are now eight to ten teams competing in Ireland. And they play a bowl game of their own each year. And the weather has cooperated also. Now that we have this time, I want to thank a few other individuals. Terry Beecham from Rutgers University, our spotter for Rutgers, and Billy Osborne from Pitt. And if Billy's name sounds familiar, well, it should. He's an outstanding receiver for Pitt the past several years, and he's on the Philadelphia Eagles roster. He's on injured reserve right now, and Billy's done a great job helping us. Also, Andrew Huff. Our statistician today, our producer has been Mike Diamond. Mike has always done a super job. Our director, Mike, and off to see you. Thank those gentlemen. They have done a tremendous job, not only today, but all season long. From the 12 yard line, Melson still going. He hands it out to about the 34 yard line before he's brought down by Adam Walker, of all people. Across the 30 yard line. Adam carrying the load of the offense, or a good portion of the offense today, also getting some work on special teams. 2.43 to go. And the new quarterback coming into the ball game, number 13, Tom Tarver. 6'1", 200 pound junior from Jackson Township, New Jersey. He's one of nine children. There's a shot of Tom, and he has a cannon. I mean, he can really throw it. Ran the option in high school. Very talented quarterback. And he gives off. I think that was Dwight Giles. He was rudely met behind the line of scrimmage. Richard Allen defeated his man and made the hit. Loss of a few. Wholesale defensive changes for Pitt. A lot of the number two and three players getting in there and getting a piece of playing abroad. First time ever that uh, either Pitt or Rutgers has played outside the continental United States. Of course, with the NCAA rule, you can't play outside the continental United States again for five years, but both teams expressed uh, an interest to come back and play here again. An article in uh, the international edition of USA Today to that effect. Dwight Giles ahead for a few. 
That was Giles on the carry. Rabinet bringing the ball carrier down. Rabinet on the tackle for Pittsburgh. Dwight Giles. I want to thank my partner here, Pat Scanlon. First time we've had an opportunity to hook up uh, this season. It's been fun. The whole week's been entertaining. It sure has. It's been nice working with you folks. And enjoyed the telecast. Hope we're back here for Emerald Isle 3. That would be nice for uh, the powers that be or that are listening in. <laughs> we want to come back. Carver has it complete right near a first down to Scott Blanche. That'll stop the clock. I believe Blanche has it, and they'll stop it to move the chain. Tarver will be back for Rutgers. Well, there's a saying in Ireland uh, that when you go to a pub for the first time, you are received well. And the second time, you are deemed as a regular and an old friend. That is 100% the truth. We certainly feel very much at home here in Dublin. The Irish have been most hospitable. Incomplete, trying to get the ball to Vince Hall. Junior running back from Trenton, New Jersey. On the coverage, Ken Radinek. Well, you're seeing a number of the faces that are going to comprise the Scarlet Knight roster next season. Of course, they lose 17 fifth-year se seniors. This was to be a, a big year for Rutgers. Anderson's six years as head coach. These were his players that he had recruited. A lot of questions being asked after a, what will be a uh, two-win, seven-loss, two-tie season. Blanche is ruled down. Football came loose after he hit the turf. We're inside a minute to go. Pitt will continue on December 30th, a date with Texas A&M in the John Hancock Sun Bowl in El Paso. For Rutgers, they'll regroup, try to get things going next year. Tarver to the outside, now gets the football and throws low. Again, trying to get it to fall. Today's announced attendance on a cold, frigid day in Dublin, just slightly under 20,000, 19,008. And last year the game drew 43,000, but keep in mind that the service academy, the fact that Army was playing over here, a number of the military personnel stationed in Ireland and also in England made the trip over. And Boston College, uh, with their heavy Irish populace and alumni, brought 7,000 people with them. So the turnout is not uh, as down as you might think looking at the, the 19.8 compared to the 43,000 of a year ago. And of course, Dublin last year is celebrating their millennium. There was more of a, a party atmosphere and uh, people were uh, all in place and ready to, uh, to celebrate American football for the first time. Five-yard penalty, repeat down. So Pitt can start thinking about Texas A&M in 36 seconds, Drew. Is you, can, you can see uh, at the top of our shot right there, some fans have now filtered over the fence onto the field. They want to get on and uh, get an up-close and personal look at an American football player. These guys were real popular with the little kids at the hospital they visited, and also, as Carver goes out of bounds, and also the kids who went to practice, I mean, they wanted a chin strap, not, a, not at all unlike exactly. American kids, they wanted an autograph from everybody, not only the players and the coaches, but the equipment people, the trainers, anybody associated with either Pitt or Rutgers probably signed at least a dozen autographs this week. Makes it kind of neat for the players also. That's right, of course, the Irish are becoming big NFL fans. The National Football League telecast seen in a boiled down version of about an hour, hour and a half on Sunday nights and again on Monday. A number of people interested in NFL football. Carver down the middle to Melt. He'll have a first down. Gary Melt still going. He has the sideline. If he gets a block, Melton could go. And Melton has it all the way down to the 13-yard line. So Rutgers still has some fireworks left in there. Gary Melton's not done yet. Pretty good strike from Tom Tarver. Well, Tarver has the ability to move, and he's got a rifle for an arm. And things bode well for the Rutgers program if he has the hand, his ball, uh, the ball in his hand. Excuse me, Melton running the pattern, makes the catch, tries to hook, runs into about five pit defenders, thinks better of it, goes back the other way, and gets a good block for a big pickup for the Scarlet Knights. Back live, Tarver, touchdown! How about that? Rutgers says, why not 
not done yet. Jim Garantano. The good look from Tom Carver. Well, Guarantano. Carver's first touchdown pass of the year. That's right here. Scored against West Virginia last season. But Tarver cashing in on the opportunity to play. Here it is, Tarver. In the pocket. Drills it to Guarantano. Seven seconds left. The Knights pick up a touchdown. And with, as you mentioned, seven seconds left. They have Geisler in the ball game. Tarver wanted to know if they wanted to go for two. Obviously, it's all academic. They can't win the football game. But they're going to add some excitement to uh, the final few seconds. Well, we have to uh, pick a couple of MVPs here, one for each team. For the presentation of the Waterford Crystal, awards by Jim O'Brien, the founder of the Emerald Isle Classic. That will take place after the ball game. Rutgers head coach Dick Anderson. Now, I don't know, Pat, is that our responsibility? Shall we pick the uh, MVPs, or does uh, Jim O'Brien get those honors? There's Tom Tarver, and he can manage a little bit of a smile. Hey, why not? The season's over. It's not, didn't go the way you uh, would have wanted, but Tom was impressive in engineering that last drive. He had a third, he had a fourth down the whole bunch when he hit Melton, and Melton made a nice run, a 50-yard gain. He showed a lot of poise because the pocket was breaking down. Kids picking up some souvenirs from the Scarlet Knights. Uh, chin straps, gloves, mementos of the game. Geisler with the insignificant extra point. It's now 46 29. As far as ball games are concerned, this has to be close to what you want. You want a lot of points on because. That's where the people can appreciate how American football works. I don't know if they'd appreciate a defensive battle to finish 14-10 or something in that neighborhood. They've certainly been entertained today. It's really wild. There are players mixed in with uh, fans who've come to enjoy the ball game, and I think they're starting to sign autographs again. And is, I think Bill McDonald, Bill McDonald may be ready to uh, to call the game with seven seconds left. Uh, boy, the fans are lining the uh, the sidelines. Uh, this has the all the feeling of a uh, the Stanford uh, game where the uh, they ran the return with the band. And yes, they they do call it with uh, as McDonald is. Uh, and I believe, at midfield. I believe that's the proper thing to do because many of the fans are actually now on the field. It's one of those situations where you see somebody else out there and you don't want to lose that. You want to make sure you get your souvenir or your autograph. And Bill McDonald puts the football up in the air and we won't play the final seven seconds and it doesn't really matter. Pitt has defeated Rutgers 46 to 29 in the second annual Emerald Isle Classic. And it looks like a Super Bowl. The fans have poured out onto the field. Again, to take a closer look at these padded seeming bohemoth to uh, to the Irish. Entertaining game. And in the first half, it was a closely contested game, but Pitt the better football team and, and won it going away. As one Ish, might have a disappointing season with a disappointing loss to the Pitt Panthers. The cry is, where's the defense? There is none at Rutgers. As we take a look at the action, Pittsburgh all over the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers just couldn't get it going defensively. Look at this. I mean, come on. Where's the defense? Up the middle. Adam Walker to the three-yard line. Then Walker again from the seven. Touchdown. Does this look easy, or is it just my imagination? Seven-nothing, Pittsburgh. Rutgers finally gets it going here in the first quarter. Ernie to Randy Jackson makes the catch. Nice pass by Scott, who had a very good afternoon. That's a touchdown there. Can will go in a little bit later on with the score 14 to 7 pit. Jimmy Can scores. Rutgers leading 15 to 14. And there were some signs of perhaps an upset. But Pittsburgh goes to the air. 
Here is Alex Van Pelt, the freshman quarterback for the Panthers. He goes to the tight end, and it's a nice run right down the sideline. How would you like to have freshman quarterback Alex Van Pelt on your club to start your team, huh? There is Kervin Richards, Swervin Kervin Richards, as they called him in Dublin. He goes in 22 to 15, pit on top. Watch the reverse on the kickoff return. Here comes Randy Jackson coming around the end, and he is going down the sideline. Nice maneuver by Jackson, and that's a nice play. Excited the Irish fans there. Ernie on a fourth down and 10 play, and really you might say, why is he throwing it? Well, it's fourth and 10. Why not throw it into the end zone? Picked off at the end of the first half. The score at halftime, 22-15. All right, Van Pelt to Henry Tootin who takes it down the sideline, but it's called back because of a penalty. But it doesn't matter, you see, against this defense, Pitt can just do it again. Van Pelt to Kervin Richards. Almost the exact same play. Here comes Richards, he's in. It is 29-15, Pittsburgh on top. You wanna to see a great hit though, one of the fine defensive plays here. Mike Bouchard from Sayreville High School and playing for Rutgers, of course, with the hit right there at the one-yard line as he stands Lewis up and sends him down. They had to settle for a field goal. It was 32-15, to 15, and here comes Rutgers. Ernie to Henry Henderson with a nice burst there. He's inside the five-yard line. Then Ernie will score on the bootleg. Here comes Scott stretching for the end zone. He's in. Touchdown. It is 32-22. Rutgers very much back in the ball game at this point. You can't blame this one on the offense. They put points on the board. But Pittsburgh scores again. Adam Walker takes it in, 39-22. They score again, 46-22. And then finally, on the last drive of the game, Rutgers tries to get something going. Tarver to Melton, who makes a beautiful run here. Gary Melton from Tom Tarver, who got a chance to quarterback the team down the field. It's a first down for the Knights. And on the last play of the game, Tarver back to throw. He finds Guarantano, who makes the catch. And it's a touchdown, 46 to 29. And the fans uh, will celebrate. Now, Tom Tarver will be the quarterback of the future for Rutgers. The fans celebrate 46-29. Now, at the end of the game, it's Waterford Crystal given to Alex Van Pelt and Scott Ernie, who were the most valuable players, and Mike Gottfried as well, the coach of Pittsburgh. I think that Scott Ernie would trade that uh, Waterford Crystal any day for a victory, wouldn't you? And maybe for a better season, but I suppose his, his wife will like it a lot. So Rutgers goes down 2-7-2 two, and two on the season. Kervin Richards had 98 yards rushing. Scott Ernie, uh, 43 yards rushing. He was the leading rusher for Rutgers, 43 yards. I mean, you got to get more production than that. Van Pelt, 15 of 25, 336 yards. Ernie, 20 of 37, but he had two interceptions and 243 yards. Dick Anderson, after six years at Rutgers, is 27, 34, and 4. The Knights finished 2, 7, and 2 this year, and Pitt, 7, 3, and 1, goes to the Sun Bowl. And it's it just horrendous defense by Rutgers this year. They just gave up way too many points, 46 points against that Pittsburgh offense. And Rutgers caps a losing season at 2-7-2. and two. Very disappointing. Uh, they were picked much better season than the Scarlet Knight football team had. And they got off to a pretty good start last week when you consider they played Syracuse at the Carrier Dome, played the Orange Men tough, number one in the nation, and then took on the Lafayette Leopards and came up with a much needed and very solid victory at home. As we pick up the action, Rutgers uh, playing well early as they go to the fast break. Now here on the steal is Rick Datica. Watch him find Earl Duncan here as he sets it up. Duncan stops, pulls up, pops and hits. Duncan from inside the foul line. Nice shot there. But Rutgers with uh, some bad tendencies. Watch this, a lazy pass by Duncan, which is knocked away by Lafayette. There's one turnover. Here comes another. Watch Savage just kind of lally that one in to duck it. You've got to have crisper passing. Turnovers, a problem for the Knights early on. The Leopards hang tough because Rutgers gave him an opportunity with the turnovers. But watch his three consecutive three-point shots bury Lafayette. 
Here's Duncan from the top of the key with a three-pointer there. And watch Rick Datica. He does the same. Datica deadly from three-point range. Swish, he hits that one. Here comes Tom Savage. It's his turn to hit the three-pointer. Savage, he has it. Bullseye for the three. Then Savage shows that he can score from inside as well. Watch the reverse by Savage. Beautiful move there as he kisses it off the back of the rim. Watch the dish by Carter here to Datica, who sends it outside, and then Ricky, wide open, hits the three-pointer. Rutgers on the fast break again. It's the Syracuse transfers. Duncan to Hughes who lays it up and in. Nice maneuver there by the Scarlet Knights. Watch Carter go baseline as the Leopards fall asleep on baseline D. Carter takes it in and scores. Watch this pass very closely. Carter over the shoulder to Duncan for the three-pointer. Yes, from three-point range. Then Carter again, who had an absolutely brilliant game, pitches it outside to Duncan, who shoots the jumper again. Keith Hughes gets involved in the action. Off the Duncan miss, here's Keith with the offensive rebound and the baseline follow. It's good. Watch Carter again as he goes inside, puts it up. Yes, and it counts, and he goes to the line to complete the three-point play. Carter even doing it on the offensive boards, tips it up and in. What a game for Craig Carter. Datica on the alley-oop to Hughes, who puts it in. Then watch this play. Hughes on the block. Datica dives, saves it, tips it back to Duncan, who throws ahead to Hughes, who slams it through. That play was all Rick Datica, I'll tell you that. And here comes Datica again with the move inside, puts it up and in. Bob Wenzel has his first win of the year. The final is 78-69, Rutgers over Lafayette. All right, uh, Rutgers uh, wins that one, their first win of the season. However, they did not follow it up with a victory. Now, this past Saturday night, a tough place to play at St. Bonaventure. And as we look at the score, St. Bonaventure over Rutgers, 75-72. Savage had 20, but Hughes had only six. Michael Burnett led the way for the Bonnies with 16. Kenrick Hamilton had 17. The Bonnies scored the last seven points of the game. 21 turnovers for Rutgers in the game. That's just way too many turnovers. They had 19 turnovers against Lafayette. This is a bad sign for the Knights. They were also out-rebounded in the game and shot only 44%. So the Bonnies are 2-1. and one. The Knights are 1-2, and two, but more Kind of a sloppy game against last place St. Joe's. At least they're picked to finish last in the Atlantic 10 this season. For Rutgers, not an artistic effort, but a victory just the same. As we pick up the action, uh, the Knights are moving it in the second half with the fast break. Here's Earl Duncan, who goes over to Keith Hughes. Now he dishes inside to Carter, and Craig lays it up and in. There's two points for the Scarlet Knights. Again, it's Duncan here. Now watch the behind-the-back dribble in the key. Pulls up for the short little 15-foot jumper. It is good, and Duncan playing very well in this game. Carter, though, continues to play well off the bench for the Knights. A nice move in the lane there to put it up and in seven times around. Look at this. The ball spins seven times around the rim before it finally goes in. Uh, one of the thrilling moments for the crowd. Mike Jones, the freshman, with a nice maneuver to the bucket. Not afraid to take it right up in there. Watch Duncan here. Off the interception. Behind the back to Carter, who lays it up and in. Rutgers with a deuce there. You think that was nice? Watch Datica here. He comes up, lulls the defense to sleep. Alley-oop to Hughes and he slams it through and another two points for Rutgers and then Datica who did not do much scoring in this game continued to do well uh, assist wise here's the home run pass up ahead to Duncan he lays it up and in all Rutgers in this one the Knights slam St. Joe's the final 74-59 all right, uh, Rutgers wins that one easily. St. Joe's never in it. In fact, the Knights reeled off 11 straight points to begin the game, and the, the Scarlet Knights led 11 to nothing early on in the contest, and obviously St. Joe's could not recover there. The Hawks, uh, just horrible shooting from the outside. They shot 27%. Uh, for the game. Also last week, as we take a look at the scoreboard, not much happening except for Rutgers' victory over Delaware. Rutgers over the Blue Hens, 70-54, 6,804 at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center Saturday night. Tom Savage had 16 points, and Craig Carter continued to play well with 13 points. The Knights are now 3-2 and two on the season. Now Rutgers 
with the, the three wins and the two losses, they'll have a tough week coming up. Two New Jersey opponents coming up. It'll be Seton Hall on Wednesday night. The game is sold out, by the way. And then Princeton on Saturday night. You know, P. Kirill's Tigers always play very tough down there at Jadwin Gymnasium. 